The nature of Monica's powers requires some tricky and athletic moves. So how much of this does Dana actually do herself? I did as much as I could do of my own stunts. Um, I do have a stunt double, I have to admit. I did not flip around the pole. I didn't even try. I was like, you know what, no. <laughs> we put a glass breaker on. It's a small charge that when detonated, it breaks the tempered glass. The guy hit the floor, got cut up pretty good. It was hard not to, but there's a perfect example of why we use stunt people. And that we don't want to hurt anybody, but sometimes when you do take that risk, that's you're glad you have them. We had this huge crowd because everyone, all the producers came down. Everyone wanted to see, you know, this little tiny girl like kicking this guy through the glass. So it was it was really awesome. Where'd you learn that? On TV. When casting the role of the techno with Micah, actor Noah Gray Kaby left the team in no doubt about his abilities. Noah came in for the very first time. <laughs> it was like talking to a 30-year-old man. Yes. He's he's he, so brilliant. Yeah. And, and, and he had just come from a, a, a benefit that he had done where a, he played. He's a concert pianist. Yeah. yeah. And, and he played. I mean, it's like, it's amazing. He played Vivaldi or he played something. Yeah. And Beethoven. he said, oh, I thought it was that he didn't know <laughs> Beethoven and he was oh, angry with himself. Yeah. <laughs> he was mad at himself that he hadn't learned Beethoven. That's really what he wanted to play. We it wasn't like, in his repertoire. Wow. I think he said yes, repertoire. Yes, I think he did. And we were like. Wow, you're an amazing yeah. child. Yeah. I started playing the piano when I was four, and actually I traveled with an orchestra. He's a genius. He's like 11 or 12, and he's, he's in high school. We'll be on set all day, and every time we get a little bit of, break, bit of a break, I'm so excited. I'm like, oh, I'm exhausted, and he has to go to school. So he's studying, I see him with his little books, and then he's studying his lines, and I'm like, Noah, you're like the hardest working man in show business. Here's one new character the Dawsons should definitely be afraid of. Seems to me like this town could use a little amazing. You're at home screaming at the television, no, he's one of those guys, you can't trust him. Look at me. You gave us quite a scare. We're going to get you well again. Well, I promise. Bob represents creepy. <laughs> I can turn things into gold. There's a calm, psychotic way about him. Bob represents an idea, and that is, what can we do for the greatest good? There are some abilities in this world that must be stopped at any cost. You find that the greater good leads you into some gray areas? Sometimes it can mean eliminating them. Stephen Tobolowsky, who paid the part, you know, came in and had such an easy demeanor about him, and yet you could tell there was a rage that he could bring out that was right below the surface. It was always an actor that we knew that the producers and the writers liked, so um, we thought about him. And he came in and auditioned, which is also a, a rare happening yes. for him, because he, he's certainly in a place in his career he doesn't really need to show what he can do. A lot of the audition was spent, okay, this is great, now can you do this in kind of a goofy way? Because I'm known from a lot of comedies like Groundhog's Day and things like that. They go, yes, and then can you do it in kind of a creepy way? Because I'm known for kind of creepy parts too. You're part of the family now. One of our executive producers said to me, now Stephen, let me, let me give you a hint. Bob is a good guy who really may be a bad guy, who actually turns out to be a good guy, who behind it all may be a bad guy. This is the kind of help you get. So a lot of times we actors are in the dark as much as the audience as to the twists and turns the story is going to take. Inspirational lecture, Dr. Suresh. I, I was wondering if I could trouble you for an autograph. Your father would have been so proud. So would your sister. Alan Arkosh, who is the director of episode two, He's particularly naughty at this, in that he would say, Stephen, why don't you do it where you're really angry at Mohinder? Where will you go, Dr. Suresh? He said, okay, let's do another take now where it's like no big deal. The least he could do is let me buy you a drink. And you do so many takes with different attitudes that you have no idea which attitude's gonna end up in the final cut, and only the writers and the producers put together the story they wanna tell. Next time on Heroes, Bob's attitude takes a more sinister turn. It's too bad, really. 
You'd be an excellent addition to the team, Claire. You, your blood, you can help a lot of people. Good. Take my blood, take as much as you want, but leave my dad alone. No one has to die. Comedy on BBC Two, Johnny's after a jammy dodger of a job in Two Pints of Lager, next. <laughs> 